Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. So far, 12 problems I have completed on evaluating the capital budgeting project. So capital investment is the amount invested in purchasing the fixed assets like machinery, building, equipment, plant, computer, vehicle, etc. So it's a long term commitment. So the uh, decision to be taken for capital expenditure should be very careful because it will have the implications for a long period of time. There are many tools and techniques available for evaluating a capital budgeting proposal. Some traditional methods, some modern methods and all the methods we have discussed in the past videos. So many videos I have made. So two more problems are left that is 13 and 14. In this video, I am going to cover up the 13th problem. See, all the problems are related. So if you join in between, you may not be able to understand. So my suggestion, watch all the videos. If you have not watched the earlier videos, go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject financial decision making two. select the topic of capital budgeting, watch all the videos, be perfect about the concepts. What is NPV? What is IRR? What is payback period? What is ARR? What is profitability index? Everything I've explained in detail. So before uh, starting the 13th problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep it ready. Now take the screenshot of the points of 13th problem, then I'll explain. Now, see the 13th one. <clears throat> the expected cash flows of a project are as follows. So, year 0. Year 0 means beginning of the first year. Beginning of the first year, there is a cash flow minus 1 lakh. Minus 1 lakh denotes it's a cash outflow. So, when 0 year is given, it means it's a cash outflow. So, cash outflow is 1 lakh. And the inflows are... First year 20,000, second year 30,000, third year 40,000, fourth year 50,000, fifth year 30,000. So what do you observe? The annual cash inflows are fluctuating. The cost of capital is 12%. Calculate the following internal rate of return and discounted payback period. The first time a new method called discounted payback period. Previous videos, previous problem, I have explained you how to calculate the normal payback period. Without discounting, we have calculated the PVP in the previous problem. But in this problem, it is asking you to calculate the discounted PVP. So first I'll explain you how to calculate the discounted PVP. So calculation of discounted PVP and IR. PV of cash outflow is given 1 lakh. Now inflows, first year, first to fifth year, the cash inflows are 20,000, 30,000, 40, 50, 30. These are the cash inflows given. Now, PV factors should be taken the discount rate. In the problem, discount rate is given 12%. So, at 12%, you can refer the table PV of rupee 1. PV of rupee 1, 12%, 0 0.893, 0 0.797, 0 0.712, 0 0.636, 0 0.507. 567. 567. So these are the PV factors, 12%. For 12%, it is 0.567. So these are the PV factors. Or else you can use the calculator to find out. 12% means 0 0.12. So 1 divided by 1.12, you will get first year. Then press is equal to, is equal to, is equal to, is equal to like that, you will get second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. Multiply. Cash inflow into PV factors will get PV of cash inflow. Now, cumulative, because we are calculating PBP, discounted PBP we are calculating. The so cumulative cash inflows, cumulative PV. So, first 17,860, then 17,860 plus 23,910, you'll get 41,770, plus 28,480, you'll get 70,250, plus 31,800, 10,250, plus 17,010, 1 lakh 19,060. That's all. Now, PV of cash outflow is 1 lakh, given in the problem. We need 1 lakh. Now, look at where the 1 lakh lies. At the end of third year, it is 70,250. At the end of fourth year, it is 10,250. We don't require 10,250. We require exactly 1 lakh. 
तो वन लैख लाइज बिटवीन सेवेंटी टू सेवेंटी थाउजेंड टू फिफ्टी एंड वन लैख टू थाउजेंड इन बिटवीन दिस वन लैख विल फॉल तो पीबीपी विल लाइक बिटवीन थर्ड ईयर एंड फोर्थ ईयर द पीबीपी डिस्काउंटेड पीबीपी विल लाइक If we have to calculate normal PPP, no need to, to take this discount factors. No need to take the discount factors. Only cash inflow, cumulative cash inflow. In the last video, I have explained you. But in this problem, discounted cash inflow. That's why I have opened the column of PV factors. Now, cumulative PV of cash inflow at the end of third year is seventy thousand two fifty. Up to the end of third year, the business will recover seventy thousand two fifty. How much amount still to be recovered in the fourth year? So amount required in the fourth year is one lakh minus seventy thousand two fifty twenty nine thousand seven fifty. We require in the fourth year, right? Now PV of cash inflow of the fourth year is thirty one eight hundred. Actually PV of cash inflow in the fourth year is thirty one eight hundred, but out of which we need twenty nine thousand seven fifty. So PVP will be three years. First of all, three years plus twenty nine thousand seven fifty divided by thirty one thousand eight hundred point nine four. So finally, discounted PPP is equal to three point nine four years. That's it. So we have calculated discounted PPP. Now we have to calculate the internal rate of return (IRR). Already in the last video, I have explained you in complete detail when the cash inflows are constant and also when the cash inflows are fluctuating. Now in this problem, calculation of IRR: the annual cash inflows are not constant. See here, every year fluctuating: twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, thirty. So here annual cash inflows are not constant, so we calculate fake PBP, imaginary PBP. Initial investment divided by average cash inflow. Average cash inflow means take the total of the cash inflows divided by five. Average cash inflow thirty four thousand. So fake PBP one lakh. Initial investment is one lakh divided by average cash inflow thirty four thousand two point nine four. Now. Locate a discount factor in PV of annuity table against year five. A factor which should be nearest to two point nine four, either more than two point nine four or less than two point nine four doesn't matter. It should be nearest. So PV of annuity table against year five. Go on looking a factor which should be nearest to two point six four. So if you locate in PV of annuity factor at twenty one percent, I found. 2.926. So 2.926 is very very near to 2.94, isn't it? So our starting point is 21 percent. We start our calculations at 21 percent. So first of all, year column, cash inflows column, 21 percent PV factors, PV of cash inflow. These two columns don't write anything. Simply you make the column and leave it blank. Make the column and leave it blank. PV of cash inflow. This one. Leave it back. Afterwards, we have to use these two more columns. First four columns are sufficient to find out PV of cash inflow. So, at twenty one percent, if you refer the table, you will get point two zero point eight two six zero point six eight three five six four four six seven three eight six. These are the PV factors at twenty one percent. Multiply cash inflow with PV factors, will get PV of cash inflow total ninety four thousand five hundred. How much is the PV of cash outflow? One lakh. Internal rate of return is that rate at which PV of cash inflow and PV of cash outflow both will be equal. Suppose if we have got here one lakh, then we can say twenty one percent is the IRR finished, because we have to see that rate at which inflow outflow both should be same. But here it is not same. PV of cash inflow is ninety four thousand. We have to increase the PV of cash inflow because we have to bring up to one lakh. So to increase this PV of cash inflow, we have to decrease the rate. By decreasing the rate, cash inflow will increase. We want to increase. To increase the PV of cash inflow, we decrease the rate. Earlier we have used twenty one percent. Now we arbitrarily make use sixteen percent. You can take seventeen percent also. You can take fifteen percent. Around if the difference is more, take more gap. If the difference is less, take very less gap. Here difference is one lakh minus ninety four five hundred means five thousand five hundred difference is there. That's why five percent I have reduced from twenty five percent I have reduced to 
16 percent it's not compulsory you can assume any rate right you can decrease by 2 percent from 21 percent you can take 18 percent or 19 percent like that also still if you didn't get still further decrease like this trial and error method you have to do it right but here I have decreased by 5 percent 16 percent I'm trying so these two columns are blank columns thing that those two columns I'm going to make use so PV of factors at 16 percent if you refer the table these are the values at 16 percent now multiply cash inflow with PV factors 20,000 into 0.862 then 30,000 into 0.743, you'll get this cash inflows. Add up, we'll get 1 lakh 7,050. And 1,7,050 is more than 1 lakh. So at 16%, it is more than 1 lakh. At 21%, it is less than 1 lakh. That means 1 lakh will lie between these two figures, isn't it? So our IRR lies between 21% and 16%. 16 and 21%, in between that, our IRR lies. So here. PV of cash inflow at 16%, 107.50. PV of cash inflow at 21%, 94.500. Here we have calculated. And PV of cash inflow, 1 lakh. Therefore, IRR lies between 16 and 21%. The actual IRR can be found by using the interpolation formula. That is RL. IRR is equal to RL. Plus PVCIL minus PVCO divided by PVCIL minus PVCIH into delta. Already in the previous video, I have explained you the first, uh, formula, the meaning of these symbols. RL stands for lower rate. Lower rate is 16%. Two rates we have. One lower rate, one higher rate. Lower rate is 16%, higher rate is 21%. So RL lower rate, 16%. PVCI, PV of cash inflow at lower rate, 10752. PVCIH, PV of cash inflow at higher rate, 9450. PVCO, PV of cash outflow, 1 lakh. Delta R, difference between the two rates, 21 minus 16, 5. Now substitute in the formula, IRR is equal to RL. In place of RL, write down 16. In place of PVCIL, 1 lakh 7050. PVCO, 1 lakh. 10750 minus 9400 into 5. So 16 plus 7050 divided by 12,550 into 5. Multiply 7,050 into 5, 35,250. 35,250 divided by 12,550, 2.81. 16 plus 2, 18.81. So internal rate of return is 18.81. Last problem, one problem I have done on IR, and this problem also I have explained you one problem on IR. Inshallah, the next video will be the last and final problem on this capital budgeting. So if you are satisfied, give a like to the video, share my channel, give your comments, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and buy the super thanks which is given below my video. Inshallah, we will continue the next problem in the next video.